Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the IU Neo Outdoor Survival Off-Roading Toolkit. Alright everybody, welcome back. So I want to show you this kit today. Um, I am going to run through the various tools and I'm going to put them together for you real quick so you can see what they look like. Then we're going to take it outside and actually test it. Um, I'm always kind of suspicious when I see these kind of tool kits, but uh, I got to say from just handling this and playing with it, it seems like it's actually going to hold up very well. This is probably one of the better put together tool kits I've seen. Um, everything, even down to the little saw blade slash knife, is thick, decent steel. It doesn't feel like it's going to bend and tweak, you know, it's not that cheap kind of plastic, uh, cheap kind of steel. So everything feels really, really good. We are going to give it a real test. The uh, compass in this little part works. All the edges are nice and sharp and evenly ground. The axe head on here, really sharp. Your little pickaxe, you got a nice sharp edge there. You know, so it looks like people actually took some time and put some time into this. So, I want to explain to you what everything does here. You can make a, uh, a course of shovel, of course, the axe and pickaxe. The ice pick. You can use this as an ice pick. Okay, You can put this all together and make a trekking pole out of it. One of the neat things about that is it has so many hollow tubes here that you have so much room to put survival gear in there. Um, and some of these do fit in there. These are different tools. This is a ferro rod and a whistle. I'm going to give you a quick test of the whistle. Definitely loud enough to be heard. And I showed you this already. This is a knife blade and a saw. So you got definitely a bunch of tools there. So let me assemble everything. I'm going to assemble them all one at a time and show you. Break it down and reassemble it and bring you back each time. That way you don't sit here and watch me screw everything together for 20 minutes. And uh, we'll show you uh, how the lengths I use on these. Another nice point before I do that is to tell you that there is enough of these to make a very, very long shovel. The longer the shovel, the better you have for um, leverage. You can actually get in there and dig. A lot of these types of survival shovels come with these little short handles, these little stubby handles. And if you want to push down with your foot and give it a good shove into the ground, you really can't do that because you don't have all that leverage. So this not only will give you that leverage, but it will give you the prying leverage as well. So let me put together each tool and explain it to you, and we'll be right back. All right, so the first tool I put together here is, of course, your, your axe. Now, the nice part about this is if you want it to be shorter, okay, and you want it to be a little hatchet, you can do that. You'll just unscrew two of these, and you've got yourself a short little hatchet. You can put the end cap on. I'm not going to do it for this, this, you know. And you got a short little hatchet. You're a little more controllable. If you're doing some fine work, maybe carving something, you can do that with this. So that's definitely cool. Um, I do like the hammer on the end. It's nice and flat. It's not, you know, I've seen these hammers on other um, kits similar to this, and they're bumpy or uneven or beat up. Um, I did bang this a couple of times on my uh, vice over there. didn't even scratch the paint. So, pretty impressive, you know. Looks like somebody actually took some time to think this out and put it together decently. Let's move on to the next tool. All right, next up is your pickaxe. Very, very nice, thick steel surface. Got my little, you know, you can make this longer or shorter any way you like it. I kind of made it short just so it fits in the camera. <laughs> but... Uh, this is really useful for breaking up ground. And out here, this is really useful because we got that caliche soil that's like rock, along with having a ton of rocks in the soil to begin with. So if I want to break up an area down here, I can bang away with this, kind of use this to scrape away or maybe even cut up some roots of a tree or something. Very, very handy tool. Again, I have the little bottom with the thing on here. I want to show you something about this too. Inside this, if I can get it off without hurting myself, is what they call a safety hammer. I would consider that more of a glass punch type thing. So pointy little edge, edge there end with a hammer on it. So that goes into all the bottoms of uh, anything I'd be setting this up with. Now next up, we're going to do the shovel. And I'm gonna show you that. So let me get that together and I'll bring you right back. For the sake of keeping this in the camera, <laughs> I didn't put all the extensions on there. But you see how long this could become. I mean, I still have three to four extensions here if I wanted to use that rubber tip on the end and that would definitely make enough leverage for me to dig into the ground. Now, 
The head works similar to other heads, you know. You'll unscrew, uh, unscrew the collet here, make it loose, and lock it forward. And then, let me try to keep this on camera. I'm going to screw it back on and back down. And there you go. One of the problems I've had with shovels like these in the past is that this tends to come loose. The way this is designed, once everything locks up and gets screwed together, as well as this, it seems to tighten as you dig in with it. I just dug into my soft soil out there so I didn't get anything scratched up. And that's how it felt to me. Like it, when I took it apart after, it was actually harder to get apart after digging with it than it was when I put it together to begin with. So you can see, you got a lot of leverage there. You got a place for your foot down here if you want to give it a good shove into the ground. And we are going to test that. I might do it a little bit longer when I take it outside. Now, any way you want to do this, you can put the ice pick on the end there. You know, um, if you're using it in a smaller kind of situation, you know, and you only want one or two handles on it, you can do it something similar to this. Screw that in there and use it like that. So if you're digging through ice and you want to make a hole through there to get to the water, that'll definitely work. Um, if you're in an area where there's extremely low water table, you might even be able to get some water using this. Um, you have the ferro rod here and the ferro rod and the whistle. We tested the whistle out. We'll test the ferro rod. And of course, I've shown you this now, what, five times? <laughs> this is the, the knife blade and the, uh, the saw. I don't know how much I'd use the saw for. You know, again, saws are really a compromise because they're only as good as their length of pull. So if I'm cutting something really small, this might work. If I'm trying to cut into a tree that's longer than this, that's not going to work. So that's an overrun of all the tools. We are going to test out the ferro rod, the axe, and the pick outside. Um, I've got some stuff to dig around in my back area where I do a lot of YouTube testing. It's also where I practice some skills that I want to learn. So uh, I've kind of built a little section out there. And I have some pavers out there that aren't even. You know, my yard tends to slope upwards as it goes to the back. Uh, and then it goes, slopes down towards the end. So it doesn't flood, but I do have that problem when I'm putting pavers in, they kind of sit sideways instead of sitting flat. So we gotta do a little digging there. I wanna dig out a section for a cinder block that I use as a, as a seat. And uh, we'll definitely try all this stuff out out there. And we'll just chop up some wood with this guy here. And maybe try and make a little feather sticks with this and start a fire with that. So let me take you outside. And uh, when we come back in, I'll explain to you the, the case that comes with, really nice case. All of these, by the way, these tool covers, you know, yeah, they're just, you know, canvas, but they're really nice. They're well made. Um, this is a plus, too. I can't tell you how many of these um, emergency shovel-type kits come with an axe, but it's not covered. So it rips through the side of your bag or ends up hurting you. This is really nice to have. It's actually pretty sturdy. You know, again, it's just the... Uh, plastic and the canvas type thing here, but it's it's well made, well put together, and it's not going to break on you. So let's take this all outside and uh, give it a test. All right, so there's the cinder block that I want to dig down a little bit for. I just kind of have it sitting there. What I'm going to do is move the cinder block, and I'm going to move away the rocks that are underneath it, and I've added a little length to this. We're going to give this a try and see how well it digs in the soil out here. All right, so I got the area cleared out of rocks. And I cleared kind of a bigger area than I needed to because I want to make sure that when I dump the dirt, I'm not dumping it on top of the rocks. So we're going to get busy with this shovel. Let's see how well it works. Definitely digging in easily. It's a lot easier than I've seen uh, my regular huge shovel dig. I'm going to dig out an area here. Okay. So you can see it's definitely got, you know, I'm going to go throwing it on top of the rocks anyway. It's definitely got enough uh, oomph to dig in there. I wonder how deep I can go with this. Oh. Yeah, I mean, without even using my foot, it's digging down pretty far. So, that's a, lo a lot deeper than I want it to be. I just want it to be a little bit in the soil there. But uh, it's actually fun to dig with this. It really, really digs in and does its job. It's kind of cool. So, let me uh, 
finish up that mess and kind of flatten it out and I'll put it in there and show you what it looks like. So I got it down in there. Um, I had to level it out a little bit. I'm going to put the rest of the dirt and rocks back in those holes because already there's too much rock because I've moved it away. So we got about a four to five inch thick layer of rock out here. So let's put that back in there. See how it handles doing the rocks. I'll clean that up with some water, straighten everything out, and that should be in there, good and solid, once I shake this down, <clears throat> have a little bit of area to fill in in here, but that'll definitely be in there once I get it all the way straightened up and cleaned up, and that way it gives me a little more of a stable seat out here, when it was just on the rocks it would fall back and forth and fall over, so liking that so far and it definitely digs i like the way this digs it just feels like it just tears right in there it's probably because the the edges on it but it definitely does a good job so for the digging part shovel definitely gets a an a from me let's move on to the next all tool. right so this is the angle i don't know if you can see the edge here of my board my paver um this is the angle i'm faced with for the next two pavers i'm putting in what I'm going to do here is break up the ground. Later on today I'm going to go out and get the two pavers and put them down. But I want to make like a nice even kind of broken up area for the shovel later over here to do its work. So I'm going to break up this rocky area here. Kind of just pushing the rocks away for now. See how this pickaxe does. And you can see it's just tearing into rocks under here. <laughs> That's probably because I had rocks under there when I dug before. But it's just tearing into here. No problem. It definitely goes deep enough. You gotta really dig to get it out of there. So, let's go over here. Kinda wanna flesh out the area. Get that stuff out of there. To show you. I don't know if you can see, I'm off camera, I betcha. Yeah, I'm off camera. But that's the edge of where the paver is. So what we're gonna do is take that edge there, and all the way around, do a little more breaking up of the soil and get a lot of these rocks out of here. I think what happened here was when I was putting in these, I moved the rock back here and threw the dirt on top of it. So that's why there's so many rocks in the ground. Again, you don't have to be, you know, a professional to build yourself a little practice area in your backyard. Lord knows I'm not. I have no experience in setting tile or anything like that or pavers or anything like that. So, you know, get out and practice any way you can. That's the point. Even this cuts right through there. It cuts nice and deep into the ground. And it's not, let's see the edge. Yeah, no, uh, no dings, no damage. Let's see if it'll cut a piece of wood after that. <laughs> it did. It just went flying in <laughs> one piece. <laughs> so it's definitely sharp. So I'm gonna flesh out this area here a little bit more. Trying to get the rocks out of the way. And move the dirt kind of flat and level. And we'll bring you back to the next part, which is the axe and fire starter. All right, got the axe together. And I have it more in a hatchet configuration. Again, you can go as um, long as you want with this. But for what we're doing here, doing some kind of kindling type firewood stuff, you know, you can see it's just tearing through this. I'm being a little careful because I don't want to chop my fingers off. <laughs> yeah, it's just tearing through that. So it's nice that it comes that sharp. Let's see if we do a little, little notch making with it. Yeah, this is definitely a decent tool kit. And the nice part about it is, is if you want to choke up on it and do some fine work with it, you can. See, I'm making little feather sticks with it almost. Slowly getting better at making feather sticks. But you can see it'll actually do the fine work as well as be one heck of a good chopper. So I'm impressed with that. Um, the hammer, of course, well, what can you say about a hammer? It's going to work. <laughs> you know, it's a piece, of, a piece of metal. 
So I'm definitely impressed with the kit so far. Um, I'm going to chop up and make some kindling out here and uh, dry out the ferro rod. All right, so I got ahead of myself here a little and started uh, chopping up some wood. Got to get the ferro rod out too. So I did notice something. The blade isn't as sharp as I'd like it. That's no big deal. You can sharpen it. Um, it's a fairly simple operation to sharpen an edge. But uh, it works. You know, again, this is an emergency survival tool. I'm sure most of you, if you have a toolkit in your vehicle, have um, a decent knife in there. But as you can tell, I'm just chopping up this little piece of fatwood. There you go. Now let's try the saw. See? It is cutting, but again, it's not cutting as much as I'd like it to because, again, you're limited by the length of pull. But as you can tell in this little tiny piece of wood, it's cutting through there pretty darn good. Can you got that on the camera? Yeah. So it definitely works. It's just I would have liked to have a longer saw now. There is one on the edge of shovel. So let's try that one. I have a hard time keeping it in place. Let's keep it in the hole then. <laughs> Just keep going with it. Now the weird part is, this one doesn't seem as effective as the little one. I think the little one's teeth are a little more aggressive. It doesn't seem as effective as the, uh, as the smaller one. But uh, still, hey, you know what? Got a nice little pile of fat wood there. Let's uh, get a couple of... There we go. One. Almost. Almost got a fire going. But hey, this is good practice. It's throwing nice sparks. That's not the problem at all. It's more me. I kind of stink at doing it with a big, uh, big striker. You can see the sparks it's throwing. That's not the problem. Okay, let's pile that back up again. I smell burning, but I don't see burning. See, it's throwing good sparks. There we go. Just took a little bit of extra effort, probably because I'm lousy with this little tiny ferro rod and this big old striker, <laughs> but we got a fire going. So it does all it's supposed to do. It works well so far with all the testing we've done. I'm going to take it back inside and tell you how I'd probably use this item and uh, what I'd use it for and uh, give you more information on the product itself and where you can pick one up. All right, so we're back inside. Let me tell you, this heat out here is very deceptive. You go out and you think, oh, it's not too hot today. Start doing the slightest physical activity and you'll realize how hot it is. I came in and I was like, God, I need water. <laughs> anyway, that's the toolkit. Seems to perform very well. Definitely better than others that I've tested in the past. Um, if you're looking for a serious kit that uh, isn't a bunch of, you know, pot metal and cheap stuff, this is definitely the way to go. The shovel performed awesome. I mean, I just could not believe how easily it was, easy it was to dig into that dirt out there. That dirt's not easy to dig into. As a general rule, it's usually miserable to dig into. And, uh, yeah, pickaxe did what it was supposed to do. Definitely did what it was supposed to do when it came to the hatchet. And again, the hammer is, well, a hammer. If you're going to bang things with it, they're going to break or they're going to go in like a nail or whatever. I didn't really have a nail to test it at the moment, so... It definitely will work. It's a heavy enough item. And the weight to this is nice, too. That's another thing, too. This isn't light, tinny stuff. This has a decent weight to it. Um, unfortunately, I have no way to test this, and I don't know a way to test it in the desert because I don't have any ice. But I'm sure it would do what it's supposed to do. And like I said, if you manage to find a shallow enough um, water source, you'd be able to go down and get water out of it. And I believe this is made of stainless steel. It actually has a different coating to it. Um, gosh, it almost is like, uh, what's the stuff? Nickel boron. That's what it feels like, but it's probably just stainless steel.
So you got eight pieces here. You can build a walking stick with it, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, it's a little bit of a heavy walking stick, but it will definitely work. Remember, you've got these things in here. Okay, so there's your fire starter, and here's an emergency knife and saw. But these things are all hollow, and like I said before, you can stuff these with survival gear. If you turn this into a walking stick, it can be... Again, I don't want to take too much time putting it together, but it can be one heck of a cool um, survival kit. Let's put this on the bottom. That's what the rubber tip is for, by the way. Also, if you want a rubber tip on the end of your tools for some reason. But, I mean, you got so much room in there to put stuff in. All that's hollow. Excuse me, bumping the camera there. All that's hollow. So, for a walking stick, and I'm going to bring you back a little bit to show you this when we get it completed. This is definitely a cool way to do it. And, I mean, if you wanted to use this as a walking stick for your bug out gear, and maybe, I don't know, take the shovel and the axe in your bug out bag. It's heavy. The whole kit is about seven pounds. It's not light, but if that's all you got, and that's what you're going to use it for, well, you know what? Better than nothing. And uh, this will hold a whole lot of survival gear in it. So, let me back out the camera really quick and show you this. Show you how effective it is. The nice thing about this is, the way it's set up, is anywhere where you turn, anything loose in here will tighten itself. If you turn up here and these are tight, you'll feel down here moving and everything will get nice and tight. They have... These little rubber grommets, little rubber washers around the outside. And it seems to suck everything in and tighten it down really, really well. Um, you'll notice out there, I mean, I was banging away with this. I didn't have to tighten it once. I did have to tighten this after the first few hits because I didn't put it on tight enough. That was my fault. But after that, I didn't have to retighten it. So this seems to be a good locking system. Let me back up the camera and show you what this would be like. So you can see you can make this as tall with all the eight um, different inserts you can definitely put weight on it you know i wouldn't hesitate to use this as a walking stick at all it'll definitely support your weight and it's nice to have the compass up there the compass does work when it's level pointing east that way north this way so it's definitely working correctly and it's nice to have this i might put a little bit of a thicker strap on here or maybe even a little bit bigger but i like the fact that it's kind of grippy and holds your hand right there so that's your final tool for this is a walking stick and uh you could use this as a tent pole for a shelter. I mean, the, the uses are just too many to announce here. You know, I could just go on and on for days. But the coolest part is, is the hollow handles. I mean, you can take an entire one and put fat wood in it. You can take another one and put maybe some... Um, you could even put freeze-dried food in here. I mean, you could really go all out and uh, come up with a neat little kit. And because you have the knife, the saw, and the ferro rod, and the, str and the uh, whistle, you kind of have everything you need to uh, get started with a fire, do a little woodworking. I am going to sharpen that little knife that comes with it. Um, it probably won't need much, but I am going to sharpen it up a little bit. But the walking stick's a cool feature that I like. You know, if you, again, my, my philosophy of use for this would be a car kit. And if I'm stuck on the side of the road, maybe after a bad accident, Maybe I've messed up my leg. Well, here's a crutch, you know. So regardless, maybe I'm in rocky terrain. Maybe i got to hike through it. There's my walking stick. So let's get back to the table. I'll give you my final thoughts on it and the price and where you can pick it up. And these are not cheap, so don't freak out. But they're definitely worth it. I would say the, the shovel kit has grown up a bit after testing this one out. So let's get back on the table. All right, so I'm pretty pleased with this kit. Definitely, I could see myself using it, say, at the side of the road in a breakdown or out in, a, in an area where there's a lot of snow or ice and I have to get my car out. Um, even just using it for fun on a camping trip. I mean, it's, it's that adequate. It's not, you know, it's not an afterthought is my point. It's an actual tool that I would feel good using um, or even taking camping with me. Um, as far as the weight, no, you're not going to put this in a bug out bag. Like I said before, if you want to just take the shovel head and make a walking stick out of that, or just the axe head and make a walking stick out of it, I get that. That probably would work. It's not too heavy, the individual pieces. The whole kit together is about seven pounds, so it's going to be a little bit heavy for a bug out bag. But to keep around your house, to keep in your car for emergencies, to take car camping, overlanding, ATVing, anything like that, on a snowmobile, maybe in a travel trailer. You can't beat it. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's an actual tool as opposed to a lot of the other ones that you've seen out there that are really just toys. Um, I like the 
protective gear that the stuff comes in. I would put it back in, but I want to kind of wipe it off and sharpen everything up, clean it up. And the bag. Now, I didn't mention this. I haven't mentioned the bag yet. They give you a nice little American flag. <laughs> but uh, it's, a, it's a Velcro. So you got a Velcro patch up top here if you got a name tag or anything like that. I'm going to unfold this on top of the gear here to show you. Oops. It even comes with its own rock. No, that was my fault. <laughs> so you got a place for your uh, shovel, your pickaxe, all of your different extenders here, your tools, your uh, bars, tubes, and uh, everything kind of just fits in there nicely. It is a well-made pouch, and it does fold out kind of like a, like one of those tri uh, medical pouches, not triangular, one of those medical pouches that pops open like that. So you get a view of everything there, right there in front of you. No need to wonder where everything is. And it's a decent pouch. It's made very well. It came with, I have a shoulder strap for it. So you can carry it on your shoulder if you're carrying it a bit of a distance, say from your car or whatever, maybe to a shelter you're setting up for yourself. And it did come with these. Now these are interesting. I'm going to open one of these up. I've resisted opening one up for a couple days now because I want to try them out. This is kind of that sticky grip tape type stuff, that double stick. Um, it isn't a permanent thing. You can actually put it on and it will make it a little grippier. So if you do decide to set this up in a configuration you like, you can have it set up ahead of time where this piece, you know, you'll know this is your, your, your bottom piece for your axe. So you're going to always put a piece here to hold it. You may put a little bit around it and it won't affect the use of anything else. So it did come with two of these. Kind of handy if you're setting it up long term or if you're just putting it on one piece that you know is always going to be in the same place every time. So, the price. These run about $140. I know for a folding shovel survival kit, that's kind of expensive because you can buy them from Rothko for much, much cheaper. The quality is way up there on this one, though. World of difference between the cheap little knockoff kits you'll get. So, I'm definitely pleased with it, and I'm definitely going to be carrying this in my car. I'm actually going to take out... The shovel kit that I have in there now, and I forget who sent it to me, but I had an older shovel kit a while back that I did. And I'm actually going to take that out and put this in instead. It is a little more weight. I don't really worry about it in the car. And it's a little bit of a bigger container. But, man, after playing with that, it just made such easy work of digging and chopping and all the other things. I mean, they're real tools that come apart. So I'm definitely going to be putting it in there. Um, the bag is actually pretty impressive. It's a nice heavy-duty mall webbed mall. You can attach it on a mall pack if you molly pack if you wanted to. Um, it's got some molly webbing on the side. It's actually decently made. It's not cheap. And you'll keep it from getting torn up by having all these nice little things. And another nice afterthought, too, that they did was they have these lined with plastic inside here. So you're not going to rip through with a sharp edge like the pickaxe or anything. So everything's lined up pretty well. Everything's really nice and neat. Um, again, you can use the handles to pack survival stuff in there. Um, if I want to just take a bunch of dryer lint and stuff it in one of these, which I may do, that's actually not a bad idea, or some black and white fire starting stuff, whatever, you can do that. So, all in all, definitely a cool vehicle kit, a car camping kit. Um, you can pretty much use this for anything you can imagine. The only thing I would think you wouldn't use it for was on a, as a bug out bag type tool because it's a bit heavy and you want to be kind of fast and light when you're with your bug out bag or as light as you can be but um, this is kind of a, a bit much to carry in a bug out bag I could see somebody trying though but it's going to be kind of heavy anyway folks that's the review for it this is the IU Neo survival shovel tool kit I will put a link down below where you can pick one up if you're interested um, Seriously, when you get it, you'll see what I mean about it not being a toy, not being pot metal and cheap stuff. It's made very well. I'm very, very impressed with it. I know this review has run, like, nothing fancy long, but <laughs> it's just, I, I'm actually impressed that, the, you know, a, a survival toolkit like this actually does what it says it does and works very well. Anyway, folks, like I said, I will put a link down below where you can pick this up. It's in my Amazon store as well. You can check out my Amazon store underneath the link for this item. And inside that store, you can check out all, most of the stuff I review. Most of it. Some of it I have on Amazon. And um, if you see anything you like, pick it up. Helps out the channel. If not, just click the link and shop as you normally would on Amazon. That really helps us out as well. And a big thank you to all the folks that are doing that. Um, it really makes it easier to spend the money on gear and bring it to you. And hunt down cool stuff like that radio. That, 
I'm still using that Redicus radio over there. I love that thing. So it definitely helps out with that, and I do appreciate it. Also, too, don't forget to check out our Thrive Life link down below. If you're interested in picking up some freeze-dried food and getting started with some freeze-dried storage, Thrive can walk you through it real simple. You don't need to join any clubs, groups. You can be a distributor if you want, but you don't need to to shop from me. And I do appreciate all my Thrive Life folks. Thank you very much. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to share it if you like it. Thumbs up if you like it. And stay safe and stay prepared.